10, 10 9, 9, 8, 8, 8, 8 7, 7, 6, 6 5, 5, 4, 4 3, 3, 2, 2 1, 1. Let's go! Now it's the Mercedes in the Morning pre-show. <laughs> Mix 94.1. Good morning. It's Tuesday. Welcome to the pre-show. Thank you guys for getting up and checking in. You can check in anytime via our request and text line at 702-364-9400. Rick and Sarah checking in this morning. So is Sandell and Aubrey. JJ, Queen Christine, Tony, Miss Kikat, Listo, Jessica, David, all listening. Also checking in on Twitter is Mike, Michelle, looks like Chaz is checking in, and so is Alicia. So thank you guys for getting up early with us. How are you doing this morning? I got to thank you because the way I slept last night, I got that silk pillowcase we're talking about. That was fast. You got that quickly. It was. Arrived uh, last night and I put that thing right on my pillow and oh my gosh, what a difference that thing makes. How so? How did you notice a difference? Well, I just like the first off the way it felt on my face. Yeah. And then being able to just, my head was kind of sliding around a little bit when normally it might get caught up on the pillowcase. Uh Uh-huh. I just, I really enjoyed it. I noticed, uh, we were talking about this yesterday, like what little thing really made a huge difference was like life changing. And um, I, I looked and mine is actually a satin pillowcase. I okay. have to imagine you got a silk one. It's much better. But um, someone gave it to me as a gift in like this gift basket. And it has just changed my hair. My hair was getting really dry and kind of brittle and breaking and even my hairdresser is like dude what is up with your hair and she suggested i get one my friend got me one i love it it's so great would you go so far as to get silk sheets or does the silk satin just end on the pillowcase i would think about it but my concern was that they would be cold and slippery this let's slide around so I, yeah. I did enjoy hitting the pillow i got up to use the bathroom and then i come back down and hit the pillow and normally my head would just stop but it kind of slides a little bit i would imagine with the silk sheets, get into bed and just kind of, you know, I, but I don't sleep in my sheets. I think I've told you this before. That's right. My husband and I sleep so weird. We are really just weird people. And so the way we sleep is when we make the bed, we we pull down the comforter, ha- like we fold it in half. And then I have my gravity blanket that I love. And then he's got his br- blanket that's like a, a Denver Broncos blanket or something. And we just lay those on top of the bed. And I only cover up with my gravity blanket, and he only covers up with his Denver Broncos blanket. It's the weirdest thing. So there's no sheets. We sleep on top of our sheets. There's sheets on our bed, but we don't get in them. But we still change them. I was going to say, do you change the sheets? What's the point of having a sheet to have the fitted sheet? You just like having the sheet there knowing that the bed is... Just I guess if like skin comes off and stuff (laughs) that it catches it before Uh it goes into the mattress. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know why we sleep like that, but... I blame him. I used to sleep in the in the bed, and I noticed he started doing that, so I would have to, like, tuck in, and I, I couldn't move all night because he was laying on top of it, but I love it now, and it makes making the bed so much easier in the morning. Let's get you just kind of you straighten fold your things blankets out, yeah, and then you fold the thing up. It's really easy. Do you, you don't have any weird sleeping habits like that? Uh, no, we go, we go under the covers. I like the feel of the sheets, and I do like the feel of cool sheets at first. I like our bedroom to be real cold. Had it at 64 last night. I just like the room, the environment cold, so I can pile on the blankets on top of me. But outside of that, we're we are under the covers. Um, and outside of that, I think it's pretty normal. Yeah, that's. A, but you do have a weird sleeping arrangement where you get up in the middle of the night and sleep. You, I do. You sleep in a different room. I do. My wife, she's a very light sleeper, and she does zero caffeine. So sleep is very important to her. So I don't want that alarm to wake her up at 3 o'clock in the morning. So weeknights... When I have to get up at three, at some point in the middle of the night, we go to bed together at some point. my In my mind, I always like to be after 1030. I'll wake up to go to the bathroom and I'll just sleep the rest of the night in the guest bedrooms. When that alarm goes off at three o'clock in the morning, she doesn't wake up. And you don't go back in the bedroom after that? Like to get dressed or anything like no, that? No, because I keep all I keep all my clothes in a separate room than hers. Oh, you don't even have your clothes in your bedroom. No, I keep my room. My, my clothes are in, in one of the guest bedrooms, so I get ready in the guest bathroom. That's where all my stuff is, and all my clothes are in. So once I leave that bedroom, shut the door quietly behind me. That way she can sleep and not have the alarm wake her up. So you essentially have two separate bedrooms, and you just go visit her and start the night in her room. But you really got you don't have a, a joint bedroom. You guys have separate bedrooms. Well, no, I consider like the master bedroom. I have stuff in there, but all my clothes and stuff is in the guest bedroom. That's very interesting. I, she's just very, she can't, because of her Crohn's disease, she can't do any caffeine and just sleeping is such a big issue for her. that I don't want that alarm waking her up at three o'clock in the morning. 
Because when she gets a full night's sleep, she's golden. Yeah, no, I totally get that. And then weeknights. It's and, and, very kind of you. Oh, thank you, know? you thank you. Uh, <laughs> and then every regular night, weekends and stuff, we sleep together oh, and everything. Oh, you stay in there then? It's only weeknights. Okay, I thought, I, I, I don't know, what, with the sleep thing, I don't know, because I know you still get up early. Even though, like during the week, no, it's just or it's, during I, the weekends. I only just do it because that, that alarm at three a.m. Oh, so yeah. weekends and then any anywhere else, it's so we sleep together. I wish my husband would do that. Or he probably wishes I would do what you the do. Three o'clock wake up. Goes off. <laughs> He's like, what? Oh, I, okay. I did that over the weekend. Um, it, it must have been Friday night or so. My backup alarm for some reason went off. Oh no! So there we are sleeping three. My backup alarm is three fifteen. All of a sudden, we're like, what is that? <laughs> there goes the sleep for that. Oh one. my gosh. They're Might just sleeping well on the weekend. Up. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's start the show. It is time for the pre-show. You pick them. You guys pick the first song of the show. Do you want to hear? Mercedes in the mornings. What's trending Woo! on Mix ninety four point one? Jeremy Renner is trending this morning. His ex-wife is accusing him of drug use and threatening to kill her in a new custody filing. He's denying the claims. He says that it was actually his ex who's the one that has the drug problem. Sunny Pacheco, she quietly tied the knot with Renner back in 2014, but she filed for a divorce later that year. It's all coming out in this latest custody case for their six-year-old daughter, Ava. She also claims that he one time stuck a gun in his mouth and shot into the ceiling while their daughter was in the room, the court hearing is set to be held on November 7th, and the couple was also ordered to attend child custody mediation. Ooh, we don't want to hear that stuff. Yeah, some explosive stuff that came out on that yesterday, and definitely hope that they get that worked out just for the sake of their daughter, mm-hmm. definitely. Also trending this morning is sleep. We talk about sleep a lot on this show and just how lack of sleep is so bad for you. Well, a new study confirms that a bad night's sleep is bad for you in this way. It makes you crave junk food. Sleep deprivation, it increases hormones called endocannabinoids, which have been linked to the munchies. They make eating more enjoyable, but they increase the desire for specific types of foods like cakes and cookies and chips and stuff like that that you're, you know, not very healthy. Lack of sleep also disrupts communication between the neurons involved in, in your appetite, and that leads to bad choices, too. Yeah, just getting a bad night's sleep, I just I think it affects everyone. It just ruins the whole day. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is lately. I started taking, like, some new vitamins. Mm-hmm. Like, my doctor, she kind of changed the, the supplements I take a little, and I've noticed it's really affecting my ability to fall asleep at night. Like, I don't know what it is. I, I, I'm going to call her today because the last... So I had an appointment with her like last Wednesday or Thursday, and then she changed a couple supplements. She took a a couple away. She gave me a couple different ones, and I cannot fall asleep at night. I am like, like, why are you taking them later in the day? No, I take everything in the morning, all my stuff except for these like liver um, cleansing pills, which I have always taken. That didn't change at all. But all the different ones I take in the morning and. I cannot fall asleep at night at all. I literally just lay there and my heart's kind of racing a little bit and my brain is going a million miles a minute and I, it's so weird. Um, It's got to be, don't you think it's got to be this because you sit there and break down. Okay. This started over the weekend. What has changed in your diet and your lifestyle? If that's the big change, that's got to be something there. Yeah. But, and it's not like it's prescription stuff either. Mm -hmm. It's literally like vitamins over the counter stuff. And I'm like. So I'm gonna, I told my husband, like, I'm calling her today because I don't know what it is. I will say, at least last night, I did fall asleep. The Sunday, oh, my gosh. I told you I didn't fall asleep until yeah, like 1.45. It was awful. So, um, I, But I don't crave junk food yet. <laughs> Not yet. Give me till 8 o'clock, and then I'll start craving I it. I would recommend this pillow uh, case that a friend of yeah. mine recommended, but I know you're already doing it. <laughs> so crazy. All right. Also trending this morning, You is trending. Remember what? our show, You? Oh, the TV show, yes. The TV show. The second season of the Netflix show based on the novel by Caroline K- uh, Kepnes will reportedly return on December 30th. The psychological thriller that follows Penn Badgley's Joe will follow his sociopathic behavior after a jaw-dropping finale. Season two is going to have Joe moving across the country to L.A. with the best intentions to kind of turn over a new leaf 
And with a new city comes a new love interest. And well, you can guess where that's going. If you can't wait, you can read the second book. It's called Hidden Bodies, if that helps you get an idea. On. I started it. Did you? Yeah, I got, I got a few pages in. I said, yeah, I'll wait, I'll wait for the, the series to come out. Uh, well, what would you think? There was, I remember reading it going, oh my, there was something in there that jumped out in the first couple of pages. Interesting. But that's p- perfect timing. December 30th, you have New Year's Eve coming up, New Year's Day, something to kind of binge watch when they release it. I like it, that. It, now, Steph, you were not here when we w- were like obsessed with the show. Did you ever watch you? Oh yeah. Me and James, we binge watched you and I don't really like suspenseful things, but you really reeled me in oh. and I love it I'm really excited for the second season and you said this is Netflix right yeah this is on Netflix because it was originally on a lifetime it? lifetime okay yeah. is it a lifetime producer now is it is it a Netflix produce and you think that'll kind of change the feel of the show because at time at times I felt during the series there were some lifetimey moments oh yeah for sure I hope they don't change that because that's what I like I thought it, it yeah. was so cheesy <laughs> sometimes but I really we were obs- Do you remember how obsessed we were? Oh, that show? nonstop. Oh, my gosh. I loved it. So I am super excited that That's this so second season's coming back. Um, and then finally this morning, Zoe Kravitz is trending. The actress and daughter of Lenny Kravitz and Lisa Bonet has reportedly been cast as Catwoman in the new Batman movie. Sources say she had been testing out some scenes last week opposite Robert Pattinson, who will play Batman. The movie is called The Batman, and it is hitting theaters in 2021. Oh, I got some time there. Yeah, that seems so far off, but then I was just talking to one of our coworkers in the hall, like, we're about to approach a new decade, you guys. I know. 2020 <laughs> is coming up. Who used to say that? 2020. Barbara Walters Barbara. in the TV show. Is 2020 still in the air? And this is 2020. <laughs> um, I don't know. Is 2020 just still on? No. She's not on the air anymore. No, she's yeah. definitely not. She's in her 90s, right? I think so. Yeah, Barbara Walters. No more The View. No more 2020. <laughs> <laughs> that is what's trending for Tuesday, October 15th. <laughs> Mercedes in the Morning, show number 1057. And now, here's your hosts, Mercedes and Jay-Z. Hey, good morning. It is 6 o'clock on Tuesday. Welcome to the show. So good to have you here. Um, do, you, do you ever make notes for what to talk about in the opening break? Mm-hmm. This right here between topics and topic, that's all my opening silk pillow. Got that one done. Oh, so do you, it's, I noticed that you always have something ready to go. Cause I always make stuff too, but usually your stuff is better. So then I just don't bring no, my, stu- your my stuff always, up. Come on. Don't go down there. So what do you have on there? Um, I kind of told you this off air critters in the attic. Okay. Last night, my wife was upstairs and she was meditating and she swore that she heard something in the attic scurrying around. And when she was done meditating, she came down and she said, I think there's a possum in the attic. Well, I don't think there's possums in Las Vegas. And if there was, I, didn't, I don't think it'd be one in our attic. But she swore she heard something up there, so I had to go up in the attic and get the ladder and open up the little crawl space, and I had a flashlight, I had a black light, and I had a taser all ready to go in case there was a big critter up there. There was nothing up there. There are rats the size of possums here. I know, I know. I'm a little concerned that you might have a rat issue. That was my first concern, too, was was rats or something, but I did a thorough investigation, at least with the flashlight kind of peeking around and then... The but they don't light. really stop in place and like, That's you what know, I was and, oh, oh, you found me. They kind of hide. I, and I'm just speaking because we had some in our backyard. Well, we had one. We found a dead one. And then we started putting up these traps. Um, and we haven't had any problems since. You might want to grab a trap or two. But I was looking too. Then, then I started Googling what like critters in the attic yeah, and what to look for. And my stuff was pretty, pretty settled. It wasn't like turned upside down. And so I'm pretty confident she just kind of heard something. In her mind, and it wasn't a rat. Hopefully, it's not a rat up there. Oh my gosh! Well, in in our area of town, there's they're all over the place. Just on um, Sunday morning, I was leaving to spin, and I was backing out of the garage, and I kind of left in a huff. I was leaving my daughter because she usually goes with me, and she was taking forever. So I go, "That's it. I'm leaving. I'm going by myself." And so I just <laughs> peel out, 
And um, so I'm halfway down the street. My phone rings. She's like, come back, please. So I was like, fine. So I turned around and I grabbed her. And she's just standing there in the in the driveway looking at something. And she gets in the car. And she looks all startled. I was like, what, what are you looking at? She's like, there's a dead mouse in the driveway. And I was like, oh, God. And the first thing I thought of was, that's not a mouse. It's a rat. It's They're back. Oh, my gosh. And my husband comes out. And he calls us on the way there, and he goes, no, it was a mouse. Um, apparently, it was it was dying in our driveway. It was still alive. Did you run over it? Okay. No, it was kind of on the side um, because we have some of those rat traps. Oh, got and into it's the, the poison thing? That, yeah, that you go, they go in and eat it. And so he made it to like almost where the lawn was. <laughs> and, and my husband's like, it was, it, it was so cute. He's like, I didn't know what to do. What would you do if you saw the mouse is there? And it's kind of like... It's still like trying to move, but you can tell it's dying. And my husband's like, I didn't want to like do something you don't to it. Cr- you yeah. just let it die because he he has the poison in him then, right? It's, yeah. a, matter, it's just a matter of time. I would. But um, he didn't want to see the poor mouse suffer either. He's like, I didn't know what to do. Well, they're all going to suffer, right, when they eat the poison. I know. They're, I, they're <laughs> are su- but suffer more than he was already gotcha. suffering. Okay, sure. You just know? put him out of his misery. I, I, so if he's in my driveway, I don't have like the tools like, how would you put him out of his misery? Well, what? Not to get, would he step on the thing? What do you do? I don't know. Like, and I don't even want to say what I was thinking, but. Here's what I would do. If it, this was in my, and I knew that it was poison, and it was only a matter of time before the thing would, would pass, I would sweep him up and throw him in a bush. In a bush? Yeah, or in a trash can, I guess. I would, I would just get him out of the driveway so he's not, not that it wasn't, it wasn't hot over the weekend, but I want him, like, out there baking in the sun. Right. I would it, give him a, a nice, quiet place to. To pass on to Mouse Heaven. He got a shoe box and he like scooped him up and put him in the shoe box and then he put the shoe box in the trash can, but he he put the lid on it. It was kind of the kind that has the lid on uh-huh. it and he put the lid on it and just put it in there and, and I was I kept telling him like what if someone goes through our trash and they're like shoe box <laughs> and then there was New a, Nikes I Oh I, I don't know. I felt I felt really bad about it, but then again, it's one thing when they're outside. When they're inside, it's a whole new ball right? game. Right, yeah. Smash you, hit you with a broom, get out of my house. It's They're all over the Summerlin area. I don't know how it is in other parts of town. That's a respectful thing he did. Shoebox, very respectful way. He's now in a private area where he can just go on. Or transition. Yeah, transition. <laughs> and you just cocoed that mouth. That, and I, I mean, I saw it from a distance. I swear I thought it was a little rat, but... He said it was just so cute. I was like, oh, why, why are rats and mice so different in our eyes? And why can't you on the rat trap say rats only? Yeah, no vacancy, <laughs> <Yes>. mice. <laughs> mice, you go elsewhere. Oh. You're too sweet. But we- then I felt guilty about that whole thing, like putting that out there for them to eat. Yeah, but you, then you don't want rats running around the house. I, I mean, that could be trouble with oh. the disease and germs they bring. So gross. And then they can run into my attic right now. <laughs> <laughs> so much going on this morning. We announced that our Not So Silent Night concert happening December 6th over at the Chelsea with Maddie Poppy, Dean Lewis, Natasha Bedingfield, the Goo Goo Dolls. We've got your tickets at 740. And with those tickets, you'll also get meet and greet passes. Be listening to the radio station. That would be Mix 94.1. And anytime we play 21 Pilots and their song Ride, you want to be caller 20. And when you do, you win tickets to their concert. Also backstage tour passes and meet and greet passes as well. So make sure you're listening for that song throughout the day. You make- should really listen. <laughs> Just that, leave it at that. Really listen for that. Wink, wink. <laughs> and then coming up here in the dirt, Justin Bieber gets the worst news ever. What is it? Details coming up in seven minutes. Sam Smith, how do you sleep? It's Mix 94.1, Mercedes in the morning. And coming up here in less than five minutes, your passes to the U.S. Figure Skating's 2019 Skate America happening this weekend. We never gossip. Or would we? Let's go. Time for the Daily Dirt on Mix 94.1. Justin Bieber just got some news. He posted on social media, worst news ever. Uh Uh-oh. I'm officially allergic to gluten. Wow. I mean, I could think of many worse things that could happen to you, but I guess to each their own. It'll be an adjustment at first, but there's many of gluten-free options out there. He added that he is bummed he won't be able to drink his favorite beer, Corona. 
Is that the worst news you could possibly get? When did, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> How many people would say I would like, love to have that as my worst news right let's now? Let's be a little dramatic here, okay? I mean, it sucks. So don't get me wrong, but yeah, okay. Worst, what happened, Justin? What's going on? Ah, uh, uh, gluten allergy. Can't eat gluten. <laughs> worst news ever. Oh, you know, someone you cared about deeply has passed <laughs> away. Oh, yeah, but I can't eat gluten. Stop the presses. Bieber uh, can't have gluten. Wow, okay. That Tito's vodka is gluten-free. That stuff is good. Do you have to eat gluten-free for your dietary restrictions? Uh, my wife does. My wife tries to. She's, she pretty much sticks to gluten-free, but um, I just, like, there's, there's a, just by so many, yeah, do. but there's so many gluten-free options. Calm down, Bieber. Everything's going to be just fine in your world, buddy. Well, Disney, they went wild yesterday, spending three hours shooting off hundreds of rapid-fire tweets to announce every, every title that will be on Disney Plus when it launches in November. That's 629 tweets that would have ended up in your feed if you follow them. It took three hours to do. I wonder if that's a new record for most tweets most in tweets a day. Most tweets in a row. <laughs> if it is, we try to beat it. Go for 630. No, I, I can barely think of one thing to tweet every couple of days. The titles were fired off based on release dates starting with 1937's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And then if that wasn't enough, they released a commercial for Disney Plus, which was three hours and 17 minutes long. Is everyone going to get that? I don't think I'm going to. I probably won't. Yeah. Um, Netflix works for me. And then Hulu, subscribe and cancel based when, uh, what's it, the hand, Handmaid's Tale? That's the one my wife likes. And we watch everything on YouTube, pretty much. Do you have YouTube TV or just YouTube? Do we have the YouTube, is it red? Yeah. Or? Yeah, we've got that one. Yeah. Um, You're going to get it, stuff. Why are you going to get it? James and I love Disney movies. We will definitely get Disney Plus. We thought about it because we have HBO and all that stuff. But no, Disney Plus, we are definitely getting it. Well, what happens if you purchased a a Disney movie on iTunes? You bought it. Then does it go away? You get sucked out of your iTunes? Do you get your money back for it? It would still be in your iTunes. They can't take it away from you, can they? I don't know. Oh, man. How would they get it out? All of a sudden, they they go through all your computers and... Suck out the do they have that ability to do that? I'm not sure because I know we've purchased Disney movies on iTunes before. Maybe it's like from here on out, and they have such a large library. Obviously, there's no possible way any everyone. Yeah, so, so that's the only way you'll be able to watch a Disney movie. No longer Netflix. No longer Hulu. Or even like the Avengers and stuff, Marvel stuff. That's owned that's by all Disney. Disney. So we have the Avengers. They're not going to take that away they from can't. us, right? No, that would be, who knows with what, what agreements we're signing, but I would think it'd be kind of some kind of violation where they can go into your iTunes and take it away. And suck it away from who you. Who knows? Sarah Silverman might be joining the late night race. She's shooting a pilot for HBO where she says she'll talk about whatever and take live calls as well. Oh, enjoy. We've been doing that for years. It's I called mean, a radio it's not show. not a new concept. Come on. But if this ends up as a series, she'll be one of three women in Late Night, joining Samantha B, and then also Lily Singh as well. Have you watched Lily Singh's new show? I have not seen it yet. I, I've watched a couple episodes, and, and it, granted, they were like the first couple, and I love her. It just it was a little disorganized, but I think that new once show getting the yeah. Get the hang, if she gets the hang of it, it's gonna be great. Now, are you DVRing these, or are you staying up DVR, till, till one thirty? Yeah, <laughs> definitely DVRing. I love her. That's why. And the last one here, we've got some new music on the way. The UK press says that Adele is planning to release her new album next month, with a new song possibly dropping in the coming days. And then Katy Perry is dropping a new single called "Harley's in Hawaii." And it comes out tomorrow. Yeah, I saw that. I wonder. Do you wanna, how do you think it's going to sound? Do you want to give us some? Harley's in Hawaii. Um, take me to a place that I can be myself. Take me to a place where there's nobody else. I just want my Harley in Hawaii. That's it. Save and we'll compare it tomorrow <laughs> when it comes out. I love it. That sounded a lot like California girls when I started it, so I don't think it's probably going to happen. I've got a Harley in Hawaii. <laughs> Wait, this I kiss the girls. We'll find out tomorrow morning when Harley's in Hawaii comes out. Time Can't to wait. win right now. Four pack of tickets to see U.S. Figure Skating's 2019 Skate America. It's happening this weekend at the Orleans Arena. Caller 20 at 702-364-364. 9400, that's you. You're playing heads up. We have four categories to choose from, so pick the one you want. Pick your partner. You get six and 60 seconds. You're going to win. Easy as that. Caller 20 plays right now. 702-364-9400. It's time for Heads Up with Mercedes in the Morning on Mix 94.1.
Kristen. Yes, hi. Hey, good morning. You're caller 20. You're playing heads up. Oh, awesome. <laughs> All right. Let's pick a category. Do you want to go with in the household, noodles, vet, or student? Um, let's go with student. Student it is. It's World Student Day today. And these are all things that are associated with being a student, okay? Okay. Who do you want to pick as your partner? Um, let's go with Mercedes. Okay. All right, you got 60 seconds on the clock. You get six correct, and you get these tickets. You ladies start now. All right, you go to your first blank of the day. Period? Class? Uh, yes, class. This is what you do if you have a test the next day. You have to make sure you... Study? Yes. This is what you use to study. You read a... Textbook? Uh, yes, book. Um, this is what you take to get your grade. You take the big final... Test exam? Exam, yes. This is what you do at uh, your... Oh, boy. Okay, this is when you take it to where you live because you didn't finish it in school. You have... Homework? Yes. This is... Oh, man. I'm always the one that gets stuck doing all the work on our big... Group project? Yes! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You got it. Congratulations. Awesome. Thank you. I guess I hope that I'm a teacher, right? Oh, oh yeah. Perfect. <laughs> That's, I, 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 raise your hand if anyone else ever gets stuck doing all the work on the group project. Did you? Oh, JC. Yes. Yeah, I was the one that <laughs> turned to the group leader. <laughs> yeah, I was like, how did I get stuck doing all of this? Nice job, Kirsten. Congratulations. Thank you. So you just got a four pack of tickets to see U.S. Figure Skating's 2019 Skate America. Such a cool event. It's happening this weekend at the Orleans Arena. Congratulations. Wow, awesome. Thank you so much, guys. You're welcome. Nice job. And we'll have more chances for you to win this morning. Coming up in the 8 o'clock hour, we're going to give away tickets for you to see Dan and Shay. Senorita, it's Mix 94.1. Mercedes in the morning are not so silent night concert. Tickets go on sale this Friday morning at 10 a.m. We're talking Goo Goo Dolls, Natasha Bedingfield, Dean Lewis, Maddie Poppy. Your tickets, though, are coming up one hour from right now at 7.40. Do you ever have one of those nights where if you have kids, it's just like never ending. There's one issue after another. Last night was, I was, by the time I got in bed, I told you I couldn't sleep last night. I think a lot of it had to do because my, with my adrenaline just running through my veins because the second I got home from work, there was an issue with my oldest. She was, you know, working on some homework and she was kind of mad at herself for a grade that she got. And I was trying to encourage her like, hey, you know, nobody's perfect and nobody's perfect. What's that song? Everybody get, makes mistakes. Is it from a... That's the Hannah Montana one. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, so I was telling her that and then we had dinner and everything was fine. And then my little one, she got upset over something because she couldn't find something. And then I'm in the office and I'm working on... The stuff for the show today, and I hear in the kitchen, ah! and then I hear another mouse. And there's someone's running towards me. Okay, <laughs> I can hear feet stomping, and so I I turn. I'm just waiting. Like, what disaster am I about to see right now? And it's it's my youngest, and she's coming at me with her thumbs up. She's like, look, and I look, and her thumb is bleeding. Oh no! It's not bad. It's just it's running down the front of it, and I, and I was like, what happened? And so I get up and I take her over to the bathroom to to rinse it off, and she's like, a, there's a stapler sticking, or there's a staple sticking out of my paper, and it scratched me, and it got it got pretty deep. I was kind of surprised it it was just one staple. And so we clean it, and she's all fine, and she's kind of feeling down on herself. She's like. Has this ever happened to you before? I was like, you know what? I can do you one better. Do you have a childhood injury that you will never forget? Like, it was like, whoa, it's either traumatic or just one of those weird, odd injuries that you still think about to this day. 702-364-9400. I told her, not only did I get, did I bleed because of a staple, I was stapled as a kid. Have I ever told you the story of how I got no, stapled? No, you, you stapled yourself? No, a boy stapled me. Wait, a boy stapled you? We were... <laughs> it was so was this, weird. Was this one of these weird ways of him showing he had a crush on you? I don't think so. <laughs> I really don't think. And after it happened, he definitely didn't have a crush on me because I got him in big trouble. But I remember I was like in second grade and we were in the classroom and I was trying to put staples in my teacher's stapler. I was stapling some things and she ran out. So I put the little thing of staples in there and I closed it, but it wouldn't 
it wouldn't snap back together. So I was pushing it and pushing it. I was like kind of pushing it with my thumb. And he saw me and my thumb was right in front of the spot where the staple comes out. And he came up and he pushed that stapler. Oh. So it stapled my thumb. I had a staple in my thumb. and All the way in? All the way in. Oh. Now, luckily, like the things didn't fold in. It was just straight through. It didn't come around. Because your thumb's too big to hit yeah. the, the folder thing. But still having a staple, both both prongs in? It was both prongs. And I looked, In the nail? No, it was on the uh, other side, oh, the, the skin side, side uh-huh. the soft side. And I looked at that and I freaked out. I was like, Oh, and I, I started crying and he didn't realize he did that. I don't, I don't think he thought that was going to happen. So my teacher couldn't get it out with her fingernails. So she grabbed a stapler remover. No, she did not. She pulled it out. <laughs> well, it's a job, right? A stapler remover. Yeah, I was scanning her paper. It'll get it out. Bleeding all over the place. He <sighs> got sent to the principal's office. She felt much better knowing that someone else had a stapler. Injury. Yeah. Mom went up to her on that one. Yeah. So what was your big childhood injury that you still remember to this day 702-364-9400 tanner did you have something like that uh yeah so when i was 10 me and my sister were playing outside and i guess she got mad at me and uh she threw a piece of glass at me and it cut open my hand so my dad had to go super glue my hand oh my i've heard from friends that work in the er that super glue is one of the best yeah. things you can use it works right especially if, yeah. if you have uh-huh. nothing else on hand right now do you have a scar yeah. from this yeah, I have a scar, like right below my pinky. Oh, wow. The the super glued glass injury. What was your injury as a kid? I, I When I was a kid, I was uh, in a field in my neighborhood, and I was on, uh, I was on my, my bike, riding my bicycle, and uh, my neighbor had a dirt bike, and he was coming up behind me, and he, he hit me. It sounds worse than it is, but he came up, and like his front tire caught my back tire, and I ended up falling down. He fell down. The bike fell down on top of me, and I busted my lip open. Oh. But this is the first time I ever had to get stitches. It was one of these deals. It all happened so fast. And then just getting up, and as a little kid, maybe, I don't know, 10 years old, just the blood from a bloody lip coming down and just freaking out and, and running home screaming. Ah! And I imagine my mom surprised when I go running up to the house, and there's just blood gushing from my mouth. And David, his name was David Ernstberger. David hit me with his bike. That's the worst feeling ever when you see blood coming out of your child. Like, I can't imagine the, the shock and horror she felt. And then when I tell you, he hit me with his bike. And then I, I remember cleaning me up. And then really, it wouldn't stop bleeding. She, she took me to the doctor. And I, I think I got like three stitches in my lip. Oh, wow. But I was always, after that, for, for a couple years after the fact, I would always be out in the fields on my, you know, my little BMX Huffy, whatever, riding around on my bicycle. And my buddies had their dirt bikes, and I was always just so paranoid that one of them was going to come up and hit me again. Paranoid after the fact. That's crazy. Let's talk to uh, Deanna. Deanna, what was your childhood injury that you still remember? So, pretty traumatized. Um, I was running through the house uh, when I was in kindergarten, and my brother stuck his leg out behind the wall, and when I fell, it wouldn't have been bad, but when I did, I fell on the drum set. So the part that tightens down the snare drum, like the little tightener bolt, oh, uh, no. went right in my forehead. Oh, oh my gosh. Did- right between my eyes. So my kindergartner pictures, I have a nice big fat scar right there. Thank goodness it was between your eyes, though. Do you ever think of that, that it could have gone like in your eye? Oh, yeah. I mean, then obviously it would be a different story today, yeah. but yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Wouldn't have been great, though, if you fall on him and the drum set makes this sound? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Right? Oh, my gosh. The does, does, anyone ha- does everyone have that one, like, school picture where they were injured and they look terrible? The things are off. <laughs> I fell off my bike before school picture day one, so... The, the photographer turned my head so far over because I had a, a scab on the side of my face. So I'm basically like, I look like I'm on a coin, a president on a coin looking sideways. <laughs> like You don't see on one side of my face. And I'm looking out of the corner of my eye. I got to find that picture. Oh. And my mom made me do a side ponytail that day because you couldn't see the side yeah. of my It was so bad. I was injured a lot as a kid. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hot three's coming up next. What do you got? All right. We're going to talk about... Uh, phones in bed. How are they taking a toll on your relationship? Also, it's it's hard to believe it's coming up, but which is a better day to shop for the holiday season? Black Friday or Cyber Monday? And what company fired a worker for revealing what goes on behind the scenes? We're going to tell you all about it coming up next in the Hot 3. 
Rob Thomas. It's Mix 94.1. We'll say these in the morning. The latest news updates happens now. It's the Mercedes Hot 3 Mix 94.1. The Hot 3 is sponsored by Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Try the new jerk chicken quesadilla at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Eat better, feel better. Okay, raise your hand if you take your bed to your phone to bed with you. Like into bed or into the bedroom or just up in that area? Is it is it within your reach when you're laying in your bed? We all have our hands yep. up. Yep. And nearly three quarters of Americans admit that they bring their phone to bed with them. That screen time, though, it's having an adverse effect on many people's relationships. People who regularly bring their phone to bed are two times more likely to use their device than engage in romantic activity with their partner. According to the survey, phone time was the number one activity respondents listed for their last hour spent awake each night. Another 25% of respondents say the last thing they see each night before closing their eyes is their phone, not their spouse or their oh. loved one. That's really sad and extremely true. But wait, don't, <laughs> I think, raise your hand if you bring it up just because that's your alarm. My phone is there because it is, so when I walk upstairs, I put it in airplane mode and set my alarm and then put it down next to my bed. So my phone's there because that is my alarm. It's true, uh, but I do have a clock in there that, I could easily use as my primary alarm, as but I, I choose to yes. use I choose to use my phone instead. So as anyway, yeah, well, the average adult living with significant others brings their phone to bed four nights per week and spends about 40 minutes on the device each night before falling asleep. It's like the new TV. It yeah, it really is because you can use it as a TV. Yeah. You can communicate to people. It's it's an all in one and it's bad. I remember last night I was on my phone just looking at stuff. And my husband's like, well, I'm going to go to bed. Good night. And I was like, good night. And then I just kept looking at my phone. That do you was think so that, sad. Do you think that causes you? Because my phone goes off, but I do read in bed, and I'm on a device. I'm on a Kindle or my, my iPad reading. Do you think s- scrolling through stuff prevents you from falling asleep right away? You see stuff, and you start thinking stuff, and your brain starts running because of that? Um, well, it could, but I've always done that, and I had no problem falling oh. asleep. It was, always, it was just recently that I was telling JC earlier, I cannot fall asleep anymore it's it's i my mind is moving a million miles a minute it's just insane i keep thinking about stuff i need to do and you know this person oh i should really reach out to that person it's just it's crazy i can't slow down and it it all stems from last week going to my doctor she had me take a couple new supplements i i'm really convinced that has to do with now could you go back do you want to try today no doing supplements and see what happens well i already took them this morning so i'd have to experiment tomorrow tomorrow. i'm gonna call her today and just be like hey is it possible that those supplements are making me really (laughs) wired at night because i'm taking them in the morning not before bed it's really bizarre also this morning thanksgiving will be here soon and that means two of the biggest shopping days of the year are almost here But when it comes to deals, which is better, Black Friday or Cyber Monday? Do you have a preference when it comes to shopping on one of those two days? Do you like Black Friday or do you like Cyber Monday? Me, I just, my personal preference is Cyber Monday. Just do it from the house. Yeah. And and as a matter of fact, on Black Friday, I tell myself, just wait till Cyber Monday. You're, you might get, get better some deals. deals. Yeah. yeah. There are a lot of discounts on both days, but it all comes down to what you're buying and if you're shopping in stores or online. So th- these are the basic rules of thumb. Shop Black Friday for expensive products and big ticket items like for your household, like TVs and appliances. Shop Cyber Monday for gadgets and things you're buying as a gift, like newer technologies. Cyber Monday is a good time to shop eBay, where people will already be reselling the things that they just bought on Black Friday. Amazon has better deals on Cyber Monday as long as you're a Prime member. Black Friday has cheaper prices on this year's products. Cyber Monday for older generations of products. And shop Black Friday if you are shopping in a store. Those are the general rules of thumb when it comes to shopping for the holiday season. I saw my first Christmas commercial last night. For what? Disneyland. Oh, it, it started with the it's the most <laughs> wonderful time of the year. And I and I like looked at the TV and I had to I blinked my eyes a couple times. I go, is this a Christmas commercial for Disneyland? My husband's like, yeah. And I'm like, 
It's October 14th. <laughs> What's going on? Mark it down. We got the first one on October 15th. But there's something about hearing that song that makes me so happy. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. That Andy Williams song makes me so happy. All right. Finally, this morning, does anyone have a secret from behind the scenes at their work that they'd be willing to share? 702-364-9400. A Panera bread employee has gone viral for exposing how the restaurant really makes their macaroni and cheese and it may have gotten her fired the clip which is on tiktok racked up over six million views and it shows a worker putting a frozen bag containing the chain's macaroni and cheese into boiling water then cutting the bag open and pouring the hot mac and cheese in a bowl voila the process seemed to surprise a lot of tiktok users with one even calling Panera glorified hospital food. Others joked that they'd still eat it, even if it was frozen. And others pointed out that this is actually a fairly common way to cook food in restaurants. A Panera spokeswoman has confirmed that they do freeze soups and mac and cheese to avoid using certain preservatives that do not meet their clean standards. But the TikTok user who posted the video confirmed on Twitter that she had lost her job over the video. In a later tweet, she says, the restaurant asked her not to say anything else, and she wants to respect that. Do you have any behind-the-scenes stuff you want to spill for us regarding radio? I will if other people will. Do you guys have anything? What's You can remain anonymous. What's your behind-the-scenes secret from your job? 702-364-9400. I'm trying to think. Someone just sent me a message this morning on something that we do, and it's kind of behind the scenes. It's about our pre-show you pick them in the fuck hour. They want they had a question about that, and I guess I could spill it right now, but other people should probably spill a Yeah, secret. if Mercedes is going to give something, you can't leave her hanging. 702-364-9400. Okay, so the question they asked me, let me find it here. They just sent it this morning. Okay, it says, I have to know, I've been curious for a while, how do you pick your pre-show you pick them songs? Is there like a playlist, the first three on the playlist when you come in, or do you think about it overnight and choose three of them? Just curious. So your behind-the-scenes dirt on this is our boss picks them. He, He picks them. He sends them to us the night before. We see them the night before. Once in a while, he'll pick one that we either recently played or by an artist that we recently mm-hmm. played. So we'll write him back like, hey, we can't have that one. And then he'll send us a new song. But it's our boss who picks the three songs that you hear in the pre-show. You pick them. And then you guys decide which one we play. That's your behind That's the scenes. That's a good one. Start. It's a real good one. Does anyone else have something like that that they can contribute? 702-364-9400. Do you have one? Do we do a radio one? We've talked about this one before. War of the Roses. Oh, this is, see, whenever you do this, people get upset. Our our fellow radio brothers and sisters get really mad at us. But it's the truth. It is the truth. It's a secret. It's, you're hearing voice actors because it's illegal to call someone and tape them without their knowledge. So if we were to do War of the Roses on the up and up, and let's say I was calling you, I would have to say, Hey, Mercedes, this is JC from Mix 94.1, and we're taping you right now. Yes. And you'd be like, okay, there's a radio station. This is obviously some kind of prank. So obviously what you're hearing are voice actors that are kind of acting things out. But but if it's entertaining, it's entertaining. So you're watching a a sitcom. It's still funny. Or like a reality show. You know that stuff's scripted. It's It's not not reality. But but the truth be told is that that stuff is their voice actors or or friends of the DJ that maybe play along with it. But... Yeah, you, you cannot tape someone without their permission. We used to do so many games like that. Because it wasn't always like that. That was not the rule no, back yeah. in the day. That was, I'd say, within the last five or six years. That things changed, yes. Yeah, that you can't do that. And so, yeah, if you hear any of those. And there's companies that radio stations hire. They employ voice actors. So they'll call you up and be like, hey, I have a radio station in Des Moines, Iowa. Mm-hmm. And they're doing more of the roses. You got to be the guy selling the roses. and or Blah, blah, blah. And then those are that's what they do for a living. It's so weird. And I felt when that when that law went into effect, Nevada was one of the last states to give that law the green light where you have to give someone the heads up. Yes. Because I remember, remember the show Crank Yankers? Yes. It was in it was in the use. There was phony phone calls, but they, they were acted out with puppets, right? Was that the premise of it? Yeah. And they would come to all the guys would come to Las Vegas and record all that stuff here from hotels in Vegas because you could make those phony phone calls. From the state of Nevada without getting the person's permission 
before recording it. And then you would always have to get the permission after the fact. Right. You record it. Hey, but just a heads up. That was recorded. We're Mix 94.1. Would you mind if we play it back? And they say yes. Then you'd be set. Someone just texted us. They don't even know what War of the Roses is. And I think that's a good thing. It's, yes. It's, it's a radio bit where, um, for instance, uh, you call in and we say, okay, we're going to conference you with so-and-so and you're going to listen while we tell them that they want a dozen roses and they can send them to whoever they want. And the the idea is if you're in a relationship with them, they want to send it to you. But for the radio, people will be like, oh, I'll send it to someone else. Yeah, like, and then that's yes. the drama. Like, mm-hmm. who are they going to send the roses to? And yeah, it's an old radio bit, you know. So there we go. We just spilled two secrets. I know, and no one spilled no one anything else. except for this one on uh, our, our text line. Everyone at my job smokes weed, especially the supervisors. I don't know where they work. Jocelyn? <laughs> <laughs> it's not us. It didn't come from internal. It's not an internal email that just came in. Louis Capaldi, someone you loved on Mix 94.1. <laughs> loved. Loved. You don't, how, oh, go ahead. Well, how do you think that song, Loved, some, someone you loved, when it comes to love songs, how do you think that song ranks? What do you mean? Like as a love song? Because it's all this interesting, you know the website Ranker.com? Yeah. Where they literally rank Everything, best traffic lights in Las Vegas. Which one ranks number one? Ranker.com has a poll to determine the best song with the word love in the title. I know that song has loved in it. But what do you think is the best song with love in the title? Almost all songs are about love in some way, shape, or form. They don't necessarily have the word love in them, but it's about relationships and love. Um, the best song with love in the title Seven zero two three six four ninety four hundred. Let me see. How about how about this one? <laughs> California love. Oh, it's a good one. No, that is not in the. It's not even in the top ten Mercedes. I'm so sorry. Let me give you. Let me give you number five to see just kind of where people are going with number five. Okay. Back away. A little Percy Sledge. Okay. Um, Percy Sledge. Yes. That's not it. I, I, how about this one? How about this one? This one. Love Bites. Def Leppard. I'm sorry, it's not in the top ten. What the heck? I know. Someone please help me. 702-364-9400. Best song with love in the title. Are they all like from the 50s? No, uh, I'll give you number four, okay? okay? I'll give you number four. We're looking for number one. Number four, song with love in the title. Ranker.com. Oh, boy. Okay. A little Led Zeppelin. Okay, I got it. I okay, got it. Go I ahead, got ahead. it. I got it. Is it this, this one? Um, Love Story by Taylor Swift. Oh, it's got to be. It, it's got to be something current. Can, oh man. Okay, fine. Um, I guess not that one. Um, Give me another one. How about? Oh, this one. Oh, Jody Watley, real love. Ooh. Show me Jody Watley. Yeah, I don't know why I put that one on. There. Do you want me to give you number three? <laughs> well, ah, this is really driving me crazy. Okay, my gosh, I got it. Uh, let's see here. Tess, good morning. Yeah. Good morning. What How about uh, Love Will Lead You Back, Taylor Dane? Love will lead you back. Oh, by Taylor Dane. Do we have any Taylor Dane on the board? No, no Taylor no, Dane. No but just Dane. for the record, in case you wanted to know, that's love will lead you back. Okay, Sally's gonna get it. I know it. Sally, what is the best yeah. song with love in the title? Love Shack. Is it the B fifty two? Is this song right here? <laughs> 
Love Shack is not in the, not in the top five, not in the top ten. Let me give you number three, okay? Number three, okay. The uh, oh. songs with, uh, oh, with thanks for trying, Sally. <laughs> this one here from Queen. Somebody, 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 somebody. Can anybody find me? I'll tell you this. I feel like they're all old I'll songs. tell you that one and two involve dead singers. Oh, gosh. Okay. Then I think I think uh, Summer has it. Go ahead. Summer, what is hey. the best song with love in the title? Uh, Whitney Houston, I Will Always Love You. And I, I mean, come on. And That's she's dead. That's got to be it. Why did you I, was do next, the, the rim shot? The shot was next to the wrong buzzer. What I got fat fingers. What was that? <laughs> that was next to the wrong buzzer. Was that like, no, she will not always love us because she's not here anymore? No, like, wow. That, that was, was my was rim rude. shot. Let me give you number two, okay? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> number two from Elvis Presley. Oh, Love Me Tender? No. What? But I oh. Care. He sang a lot of songs about love. He did. Falling. So many love songs are coming into. This is a, I, I'm tr- I'm going through trying to think like okay who's dead? These are all people that are alive. But just because I really want to play this song, uh, Griselda, what do you think? LL Cool J, I need love. That. Yes. He is still He's with us. Still with us, so we know that's not the number one song. But still a good song. Yeah. Oh man, this might be my oh wow we all pick. Thanks oh, for the we, idea. Should that be our theme as we call now? Songs oh, with love, love in the title. Song yeah, with love perfect. In the title. Done, I love it. Oh um, gosh, let's talk talk to Abby. This is a, a singer that is no longer with us. Abby, what song? <laughs> best song with love in the title. Love hurts by Roy Orbison. Love hurts by Roy Orbison. I'm. What about Love Hurts by Nazareth? No, not Nazareth. Oh, damn. Do you want me to give you number one, or uh, why don't we try, um, why don't you go right here? Okay. Number five, line five, Lexi. Good morning. Good morning. Best song with love in the title. Oh, Oh, uh, all you need is love by the Beatles. All you need is love by the Beatles. Well, now you've got a 50-50. You've yeah. got two alive, two passed away. What is is that? Is it the Beatles? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That is the number That's one. number one song with love in the title. Oh, very yeah. good, Lexi. Yeah. You win absolutely nothing. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Just the honor of saying I got the number one answer. Yes. Thank you, Lexi. Oh, now the, Be- the Beatles, I, how can you classify that as, as them being deceased? There's still two of them two, alive. I know. I said involves dead people. Oh, it involves, it involves dead, people. dead people. So two people okay. are dead out of the Beatles. What do you think is the best song with love in the title? Oh, I got it. Uh, um, is there a Love Hurts? Is that Lizzo? She has, is that Love Hurts? <laughs> Truth Hurts. Truth Hurts. <laughs> love Does Hurt. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a song called Love Hurts. Yeah, I got to think about it, though. What's interesting, though, like if you just type love into iTunes... Uh-huh. I can't even play what the number one song is because it, well, it's by Kendrick Lamar. Love by by oh. uh, Kendrick Lamar. And then this one by Nat King Cole. Make it, take my heart and please don't break it. Love was made for me and you. So it's interesting what comes up as, with just that word. But every what's your favorite love song? Put some thought into it. I love it now that we have our Oh Wow Wheel theme pick for Friday. Yeah. Best song with love in the title. Don't give away any answers on that no. one. No. You know what I love? Hmm. Not So Silent Night. Oh, my gosh. What a lineup we have. I with love, love, love this lineup. Maddie Poppy, Dean Lewis, Natasha Bedingfield, and our headliner, the Goo Goo Dolls. And here's the deal, guys. So we'll have your tickets coming up later this hour with meet and greet passes. Woo. But just in case you don't win them. Do yourself a favor. Sign up for Mixmail now at Mix941.fm. Do it by tonight. What's it, the time cutoff, Steph? 11 p.m.? Is it 11? 11.59 tonight. Oh, oh 11.59. Oh, okay. If you sign up by 11.59 tonight, 
you will get an exclusive pre-sale code. So tomorrow at 10 a.m., you can buy tickets with that pre-sale code before it opens to the public on Friday. So do it now. It's going to be such a good time. Friday, December 6th at the Chelsea at the Cosmopolitan. I'm um, counting down the days. It's going to be a fun one. It's on a Friday night. We get to it's party. It's on a Sunday. Oh, every year it's on a Sunday. We're like, we got to go to work tomorrow. Sorry. But this year, oh my gosh, we're going to have the best time. I'm so Let's, excited. Can we still take off the following Monday to recover? Yeah, you know, it's, that's how much we're going to party. <laughs> It's here in Justin Bieber. It's Mix 94.1. Mercedes in the morning. Tickets for you to go see Dan and Shay coming up one hour from right now. We never gossip. Or would we? Let's go. Time for the Daily Dirt on Mix 94.1. Billie Eilish went into the crowd during a show, and someone stole one of her rings right off her finger. Oh, my gosh. Why? I, mean, I guess they want crazy. a piece of Billie. The crowd started chanting. To the, she said, so someone stole my ring. The crowd starts chanting, give it back, give it back. But the person did not give the ring back. Wow, rude. And then she says the person might as well keep it, but told them to take care of her ring. Uh, would you allow that? I, w- I would demand it back. I'd be like, I'm not performing until <laughs> I get my ring back, please. No one is leaving yeah, here. seriously. Who has it? That's so rude. Dan and Shay, speaking of Dan and Shay, their new collaboration with Justin Bieber, 10,000 hours. Let me get you some of that right here. This one right here. I'd spend 10,000 hours and 10,000 more. Oh, if that's what it takes to learn that sweetheart of yours. This song is debuted at number four on the Billboard charts. And thanks to this, Justin Bieber has now spent 200 weeks in the Hot 100 Top 10. He's some, going places. He's he, going to do something one of these days. He's got some talent, right? Yeah. Now, that's something only eight other artists have done. Want to guess who has spent the most time with a song in the top ten? Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey. She's number two with 279 weeks. Uh, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson's not uh, in the top ten. Janet Jackson has spent 219 weeks. Now, I'll give, you, I'll give you the number. The person that has spent the most weeks in the top 10 mm-hmm. has spent 360 weeks in the top 10. It's a single person? Yes. Elvis? Not Elvis. It's this girl right here. Oh. Rihanna. Rihanna. And only because you just mentioned Mariah Carey, we're talking about Christmas music last hour. Just a little of this for you. my first Christmas commercial last night. It was for Disneyland, the holidays at Disneyland. and I had to do a double take. I was like, wait. I had to stop and think, like, what is the date today? I, and then I panicked. I had this internal panic. Like, I haven't finished Christmas shopping yet. What am I going to do? Like, it really freaked me out. And then you start to think, wait, what was I for Halloween? What did I do for Thanksgiving? Yeah. Oh, wait, those two events have not happened yet. <laughs> it's so weird. Kelly Clarkson's, um, so she does was it the Kaleoki she does on yes. her show? In her latest version or edition of Kaleoki, she did a song, The Weeknd, Can't Feel My Face. Here's a little, little of uh, Kelly Clarkson right here. I can't feel my face when I'm with you. But I love it. But I love it. Oh, I can't feel my face when I'm with you. I think because she's Kelly Clarkson, any song she tackles is going to be amazing. I haven't heard her do a bad version of any song. I know. Yeah, she's so good. All right, I have to keep it short because we're running late. Coming up at 7.40, your tickets to our Not So Silent Night concert with Goo Goo Dolls and Tasha Benningfield. Plus, when you win those tickets, you'll also get meet and greet passes. We have got your tickets to our Not So Silent Night concert. Those tickets are coming up here in just about six, seven minutes. Have you ever been to Fox? Ridge Park, Fox Ridge Park in I, Henderson. I have been there. Oh, have you? Hold on. Why, why do I know that place? Do they have a softball field there? Uh, looks like they do. I'm looking at a picture of it. There's all kinds of I stuff going on there. I believe my kid has played softball or my husband back in the day when he played softball. I know for a fact I've been to Fox Ridge Ooh, Park before. Have you been to the swing set there? Because they say, according to a local urban legend, that the swing set at Fox Ridge, uh, Fox Ridge Park is said to be haunted by the spirit of a young boy 
who was hit and killed by a car while playing in the street nearby. Wait, what? They're saying that swing set, and it moves. How, how is it haunted? You're it just... moves at times, too. The not swing from the, moves? Not from the wind, but it moves. How do we know it's not from the wind? They say you, you hang out by that swing set, you feel a disturbing energy. Really? And then others report seeing the image of a young boy quickly appear, then vanish. Huh. Yeah. I, I just went to the Yelp page for it. Yes. Okay, so I'm reading this review on this from a guy, and this he just wrote this in June. My buddy came out from Denver for vacation, and we were talking about ghost stories. And I brought up the legend of this boy that appears on a swing at night. We decided to do more research on this and got excited to see this for ourselves. We ended up going and made sure we arrived just before witching hour, which is 3 a.m. apparently. Did not know that. We had made plans that we would stay in the car because we didn't want to be completely exposed to whatever is there. But we ended up leaving the car because we could barely see anything. Not even one minute passed from leaving the car and I see what looked like a small cloud or mist in the middle of the field. Stop it. I'm literally reading I'm, this on the He's got goosebumps right now. Small in the middle of the field, slowly moving through the field. I couldn't believe my eyes, so I pointed at it so my buddy could get a look at it. He saw it too. I've never seen a ghost before, but we knew exactly what we saw. I've never run so fast in my life. We got back in the car, and I hate to say, but sped away quickly. My headlights were rapidly turning on and off, and I had to fight to keep the wheel straight. If you come here expecting to see this for yourself, please be respectful and drive safely because this is no ordinary ghost. And I read that the boy died because of a drunk driver. My experience today was life-changing, and I hope that this will be my last time I see something like this. It was definitely a rush. Thanks for reading. Also, I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but my car honks three times if I leave the keys in my car, so that had probably bothered this spirit. Whoa. Fox Ridge Park. Anyone that, know of any haunted place haunted places here in town? 702-364-9400. I'm looking at some stuff here. Online? The Hoover Dam, they say, is haunted. Oh, really? Now, this this is... I was, I was looking at some photos here. This goes back to 2014. So, uh, th- there's a woman that was accidentally photographed by a bystander who was there taking pictures of the sunset. Moments later, this woman jumped off the side of the... Uh, off the Hoover Dam. Oh. Very sad, sad story. But they're saying it's this woman's... This particular woman is the one that haunts the Hoover Dam. Really? What does she do? Did you know there were 112 workers that were killed in the construction of the dam? I, don't really? I knew I knew people that died building it. I didn't realize there were 112 people that died building that thing. I did hear that. I didn't know it was that that high of a number. But that I'm sorry. I'm still freaked out about this Fox Ridge Park thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyone think- anyone uh, experienced that out there? I, I'm reading all these reviews, and people are saying that. Yeah, there's a lot of people that go out there to see that. Uh, but yeah, okay, so Hoover Dam, I'm sorry, what else? <laughs> well, there's one that's like a, a, a thing here in town. It's very interesting, but I don't want to, I don't want to come across the saying this place is haunted. This, can you see right there? That place right there? Oh, well, I could understand why it would be Titan. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Okay, well, this is, I mean, to me, this is cool. Because of considering what happened. The Titanic the exhibit, item. yes, because they're saying, uh, <laughs> in addition to the artifacts from the wreckage, there's also the big piece that's actually taken from the side of the sunken ship. Talk to the employees. They swear deceased passengers haunt the exhibit, appearing, disappearing, closing doors, and making their presence felt in rooms modeled after the same ones on the Titanic itself. I want to go down there now. That makes sense to me because you have all these items that were there when that happened. So that makes sense. And I I think that's historical. Yeah, sorry. That's when you read something and <laughs> yeah, you say yeah. it just because you read it. I'm so sorry. Let's talk to Don. Don, good morning. Good morning. Talking about haunted places in Las Vegas. Do you know one? Yeah, the old Las Vegas Academy Theater. It's for sure haunted. There was a, a man whose house burned down mysteriously uh, when the city wanted to build the, it was a college originally. And so now he haunts the place. I've had friends who swear like the, the lighting was going to fall down on them and it stalled. Or, you know, people who have seen him in closets. 
That's really interesting. You're you're like the third person. A bunch of people have texted about that one. That's really interesting. The former home of Red Fox here in Las Vegas. They say it's in the area area of I think Eastern and Hacienda. They don't know where Red Fox is, former houses. They say that Red no. Fox haunts the home. He's, he's said oftentimes that when he passes away, he's not going anywhere, and he's go, he haunts that home. And then there was an intersection. I want to pull this intersection to see if you can tell me why people say it's haunted. Hold on. We're getting a bunch of texts um, on haunted places. You can text us or call us, 702-364-9400. What was the? The corner of Flamingo and Koval. Flamingo and Koval. Is that over by the hard? Well, no, wait, where is that? Flamingo and Koval. On the other side of the Hard Rock? No. Um, I can't even. Flamingo and Koval would be between Paradise and Las Vegas Boulevard. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I know where we were talking. What's, why is that haunted? Where Tupac was gunned down. Oh. They say the spirit of Tupac haunts that intersection. That's the first I ever heard that one. Getting some text here. Ghost hunters have been out to that park and had equipment that captured a voice that said something. There was a house on Pecos and Sunset across from Wayne Newton. People call it the 666 house. And then my daughter practices softball at Fox Ridge Park every week, and it is crazy. You can even feel the presence by the bathrooms. Just go to the just go to the Yelp page of that park and read the stories. There's more? Oh, yeah. There's a bunch of them. I went one time with some of my friends. I thought they were joking about this park being haunted. Thought it was some total BS. But this bleep is for real. <laughs> Do we go out there now? Send someone out there now? I don't know. I don't like messing with that stuff. I mean, if someone wants to volunteer to go, that's one thing. But I don't want to tell anyone to go. Because I wouldn't go. We have to do it when, they, when it's still dark out, go early in the morning? I don't know. It sounds like it happens at all times. There's our Instagram picture of the day. Go out to the park and we'll sit on the swing set. Put our arm around the, bo- <laughs> the ghost boy. Hey! Hey, buddy. Oh, this is... I don't know why I'm getting, like, a tightness in my chest. This is freaking, uh, freaking me out here. Here's what we got coming up here. That's interesting. That's, uh, how many people go check out that park today? Coming up here in about four minutes, your tickets to our Not-So-Silent Night concert with the Goo Goo Dolls, Natasha Bedingfield. These are winning before you can buy them. They go on sale Friday. You'll also get meet-and-greet passes. And we also have the Hot 3 coming up. What do you have? Can I read this really quick? Yes, yes, Just yes. text. I went to Fox Ridge Park with my friends over the summer. We went around 9 p.m. and I took pictures but deleted them because I didn't want that energy around me. And when we left, I had scratches on my legs. And the entire time we were there, I felt dizzy. My other friends were dizzy and had scratches all over their body as well. Okay, coming up in the hot three. Woo! <laughs> How much money would it take you to give up your Facebook? How about YouTube? How about Google? We're going to talk about how dependent we are. Also, how many of you think that you are your mom's favorite child and a funeral cracks up after the dead man says, my one request is for you to play this at my funeral. We'll tell you what it was coming up next in the Hot 3. Children, I have some exciting news. It's time for the Mercedes Hot 3 Mix 94.1. The Hot 3 is sponsored by Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Try the new jerk chicken quesadilla the Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Eat better, feel better. All right, think about it. Most of the websites and apps that we use all day, every day, are either free or they're pretty cheap. I mean, unless you consider paying an insane amount uh, in terms of the data that they're collecting on us and happily selling to Russia, but that's mostly free. Not not taking that into consideration. So a new study asked just how much money it would take for us to give up these websites. And here are some of the results. How much, in terms of money, would you be willing to accept to give up all search engines, especially Google? Oh, no search engines whatsoever? Whatsoever. How much money would it take for, for you to say, okay, sure, I'll give it up? For the rest of my life? For the year. And how would you use the internet? Well, you could still go on and do other stuff. You just couldn't search you anything. couldn't search stuff. $100,000. Wow, you are expensive. We, yep. ne- we need $17,530 oh. a year to give up all search engines. <laughs> Think about how many things you Google and no one uses really, who uses Bing, but I mean all the search engines out there. Well, it's, it, it rounds down to about $48 a day. For us. So if someone wanted to give me 50 bucks a day to not use Google, depending on the day, I'd probably take it. You oh, know? we have option per day so I can do my Googling tomorrow and then take the 50 bucks today? Yeah. 
Okay. Perhaps, perhaps. Um, to give up email, it would cost us $8,414 a year, which means it's worth around $23 a day. I'd give that one up. Uh, yeah, I feel like I do more texting than I actually do yeah. emailing and stuff. I just, yeah, that, that could be done. Map apps, Waze, Google Maps, stuff like that. We're willing to give those up for about 10 bucks a day. We would need $1,173 to give up YouTube, Netflix, and all other video streaming services, meaning they're worth about $3.20 a day. We need $576 to give up Facebook, meaning it's just worth about $1.58 a day to us. And finally, we would need $0.46 cents a day to give up streaming music, like your Spotify's and your Pandora's and stuff like that, $0.46 okay. cents a day. Um, also this morning, do your parents love you? And all your brothers and sisters equally. We've talked about this before. According to a new survey, 33% of people say their mom has a favorite child. And 22% think their dad has a favorite child. We've never really talked about the difference as far as like moms and dads. Do you think your mom and your dad have a favorite child? Is it the same child? Is it both baby John or does one have a preference towards another? I think John is is the favorite son. You think yeah, by think, both? Yes. I think it was John, Jenny, me. I have my moments. I certainly have my moments where I shine. But I think overall, it goes John, Jenny, me. Interesting. Do you have a favorite child? I, I have favorite children for different reasons. Like, sometimes they get on my nerves and one does more than the other. <laughs> or all, like, I have secret, I have secret codes with each of them. Like I have a a weird a different bond with Brooklyn than I do with Sophie, so I, I at times I do, I guess. But don't most parents? Yeah, but well, I think generally overall, like my mom's favorite child we've talked about is my brother Mario. He's the youngest. But if you ask my dad, I don't think my dad would have told you the truth. But I really think my dad's favorite child was different. I think that my sister was my dad's favorite child. Really? Not not one of your brothers? No. Interesting. He and my little sister, like they, but then I, then it's I not think sometimes, sometimes I think it's, it was me for my dad. Yeah, it's got to fluctuate if you're a parent. I think it was between me and my sister. I think we were definitely the favorites of my dad. I, I like your thinking of the whole thing. Cause I don't, I don't have kids, I got, but I got two dogs and I love them both. There are times where Jax is more my favorite. There's times where I'm in, I'm in a Zoe mood. Yeah. And I want some Zoe. I don't want Jax. But, and you have your little jokes with each of them. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we have our own shtick. <laughs> you can just give one a look and you know. Like, and they know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. Um, the survey found the majority of people say the birth order shaped their personality, too. Oldest children are the most likely to describe themselves as intelligent, introverted, and leaders. Middle children, most likely to describe themselves as self-disciplined, confident, and outgoing. And the youngest children, they were most likely to describe as empathetic, funny, and charming. How do you think your life would be right now if you were the youngest in your family? I think I'd be empathetic, funny, and charming. Mm. <laughs> no, if I was the youngest... Would you still be where you are right now? No, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. I think I would be traveling the world, just going wherever I could, scraping together some change, seeing if I could <laughs> get a ticket to somewhere. What about you? If you were the oldest... You're the middle child right now. So if you're the oldest child, do you think life would be different for you? I think if I was the oldest, it would kind of play out the same. But if I think I was the youngest, I probably wouldn't be in Las Vegas. I, I, I think I'd probably still be back home and uh, I'd still be in Pennsylvania, I think. Do you think you would have like a different life, you, you know, go a nine to five job? I think so. I think kids? things would have just kind of, uh, well, maybe I, I just, I know I wouldn't have been here in Las Vegas because I just, the way... My life was going. I, I did want to get out of town. I did want to experience more. And just because some of the rules that were laid down on me from, from, my, from my father and from my parents, I just wanted to get out of town and experience stuff. My brother had it easier, so his, his urge to get out of town was not there. It's always fun to watch the level of strictness go down mm -hmm. with each kid. As the oldest, they were most strict with me. And then just every child, it got easier and easier before Mario's running around yeah. there just like, Whoa! <laughs> I can do whatever I want. All right. Finally, this morning, talk about getting the last laugh. Loved ones at a funeral for an Irish Defense Force veteran, Shay Bradley, were shocked and then delighted when they heard the voice of their late friend calling out from his coffin. So the man's ca casket was lowered into the ground and he had a pre-recorded message that he asked his family members to please play as he was being. Oh, come buried. on. <laughs> Dude.
We have the audio. Okay. Now, there, th- 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 we had to bleep it because he curses a lot in it. But this was what was played as he was lowered into the ground. This is the actual audio. This so we're audio. now mourning. What's his name? Um, his name was Shay Bradley. We're all at Shay's funeral. We're sad. He's dead. And everyone's crying. Yes. And then his, his family's like, I have to play this. Dad wanted it. Here we go. Hello? Let me get he said where the bleep am i let me out <laughs> oh, let me man. out it's bleeping dark in here is that the priest i can hear this is Shay. I'm in the box. No, in bleeping front of you. I'm dead. Everyone was laughing at the, that point and crying as Bradley's voice began to sing. And then he, at the very end, he started singing, hello again. Hello. <laughs> I just called to say goodbye. The footage has gone viral. More than 500,000 views and over 15,000 likes. We'll post it too on Facebook if you want to check it out and hear it. The unedited version. Yeah, which we're right. Not able to- You ever show up, you come home from work, and you walk into your house, and you open the front door, and there's just something you did not expect to see? Oh, man. I, how many times, how, mu- how much time do we have left on the show? <laughs> Why? Did you walk into something weird yesterday? This was actually on, on, on Friday. My wife had a busy week of traveling and a lot of stuff going on and everything, and she told me about that she was going to get a massage. So I knew she was going to get a massage. I just was not aware that she was getting a in-home massage. Oh, is that what she said? <laughs> what do you look like? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm I'm just a massage. I'm just a massage. <laughs> Never mind. We're both in our in our bed together. No, I'm it's totally a new joking. style. We both get nude. <laughs> I came home Friday night. It was probably about uh, I don't know five o'clock, and I, I pull up, and there's a car kind of parked in front of my house, not really paying attention to it. And I, I, he's there. <laughs> <laughs> Quick scram! It's just too easy. I'm totally Keep joking. I, I don't this. want her to get mad at me. No, I'm serious. I'm totally joking. She'd be piling on top of the jokes. Are you kidding me? He runs out the back door. <laughs> was it a guy? No, no, no. It was, it was a woman. <laughs> it was a girl. It was a lady. <laughs> but that's why I, I kick open the, the the garage doors. I come in, and there is my wife right there in our living room, and she is nude on a massage table. There's music playing. And there's the, the woman giving her a massage. And my wife is like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, good, okay. Just was not expecting that when I walked in the front door. Wife naked, on a massage table, nice music playing, tranquil massage music playing. They had a candle going, too, to set the mood. She was getting an in-home massage, but wow. naked. If people will come to your house and do anything at this point. They really it, it's will. It's really, it's amazing what people will bring their services to you now. We never have to leave our homes if we don't want to. It's kind of amazing. My wife has to get, she gets uh, IV therapy done, and uh, she was having it done at the house for, for the longest time. So I would come home, my wife would be sitting on the couch, and she'd have an IV hooked up, and there's the, the nurse with the IV bag giving her, her her stuff, just lying there on the couch, like, hey, what's up? I've had people come to my house to do my do my hair give me a facial i've had um, my lashes done at my house before and then they were all one-offs like it was an emergency mm-hmm. and i couldn't make it and so they did that they don't i don't think they typically like to do that but it's really amazing what's the, what's the weird thing you came home to find you open the door and you were like what 702-364-9400 but then my wife starts a conversation with me about how my day was and stuff that i was doing on friday and it just, I don't, it just felt awkward because she's naked. She's giving the massage. The masseuse, she's, she's joining in the conversation. I'm like, yeah. giving my wife a, a massage. I'm like, I got to go upstairs and make a call. And so I went upstairs and I just stayed upstairs for probably about 20, 30 minutes. And they finished. My wife's like, who would you have to call? At five, you don't, a, you don't make phone calls. And B, it's 5.30 on a Friday. I'm like, I just don't want to be down here. I just went upstairs it's and awkward. sat on my phone and you know did some stuff upstairs. I, just, I, I felt weird. You're, you're naked and we're... I know you're my wife and everything, but you're getting a massage. Focus on the massage. Yeah, you don't need me to be here and distract yes. you. I remember one time when I was living in my apartment here in town, 
um, it's like my first time really, truly on my own without my parents close by mm-hmm. at some point. I lived in an apartment with some girls in, in Colorado, but this was it. And so I just wasn't great at doing home stuff on my own. And I will never forget, I came home and I opened the door to my apartment and I s- stepped on the floor and all of a sudden like bubbles went whoosh, in front of me and I was like, and I looked down and there was bubbles everywhere on the floor. And I was like, what is happening? And I look and they're in my kitchen and I realized I used like Dawn dishwashing soap in the dishwasher Oh no. I just I I knew better, but I just wasn't thinking and I just put it in there and bubbles all over the place. That was what I came home to. And you the thing is you don't even know how to begin cleaning that up. It's just so overwhelming and I just stood there forever and just looked like what do I even do? That was probably one of the weirdest things I've ever come home to. And it's one of those deals where you turn on the dishwasher, head out. Thinking, okay, yeah. do my errands, come home, dishes will be done. Do you run appliances, like stuff like your washer and your dryer and your dishwasher when you're not home? Yeah, we usually do. So yeah. do I. The only thing I don't do is my dryer because I'm afraid that something's going to happen and it's going to catch fire. I like to be home when the driver, dryer is on just for the simple fact that I like to go into the backyard where the vent is and smell it. <laughs> it smells so good. Um, let's talk to who is this on the line? Ivy, Ivy, what did you come home to uh yeah i was seven and my friends and i were just playing done playing outside it was like noon so broad daylight walk in on my mom and her boyfriend doing you know what oh the tango in the living room in the so- living room <laughs> man i mean that is disrespectful <laughs> Broad daylight, too. <laughs> they can't even look out the window just to make sure that no one's running inside. <laughs> You've got seven-year-old Ivy, your daughter. She's outside playing. <laughs> you cannot hold off that long or go upstairs. Could you imagine how you would have felt if that would have happened and she would have put Don dishwashing soap <laughs> in the <laughs> bubbles? Parents, too much going on there. She's like, I swear he's giving him a massage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could say that, I suppose. <laughs> Coming up here this hour, 825, your tickets to go see Dan and Shay. And coming up next, we kick off 60-plus minutes commercial-free. It's a little pink. It's Mix 94.1. This is Mercedes in the morning. And your tickets to go see Dan and Shay are coming up here in just about four minutes. Okay, I just made uh, Steph and Jocelyn come in here. And grab something out of the cauldron of doom. Yeah, you you have no idea no, why this why is, is here. Going, why is the bucket here? Uh, okay, so you have taken improv classes before, haven't you? Yeah, about three, four years ago. I went for like three weeks in a row. Where you can just learn how to be more quick-witted, quick on your feet. And just, it's a good exercise for anyone in any job. I really believe that. Any prof- I mean, it puts you on the spot. I walked in, the class I took, I walked in, there was like 15, 20 people there. And you're immediately put on stage, you're doing stuff, and it, it really... Takes you out of your element and puts you on the spot. It makes you uncomfortable. And mm-hmm. I, I think that that's what this show is all about, being uncomfortable. So a girlfriend of mine is taking improv classes and she's trying to get me to go. And she was telling me about them last night. And she told me about one of the exercises they do. And I want us to try this exercise. Okay. Are you okay? What mm-hmm. has happened? Uh, my energy drink shot up in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in- improv. Improv. <laughs> all right. So here's, here's what the exercise is. It's called... I'm sorry I'm late, but I'm sorry I'm late, okay? Okay. So I just had Steph just print out a list of movies, cut them up, and throw them in this cauldron of doom, okay? okay. All right. So what you do is you, you pull out one of these movies, and you use, you describe the movie by pretending it's you and that you just got here and you're late because of what happened in the movie. And people try to guess who you are, okay? Guess the movie or guess the character or just... No, just the movie. So, for example, let's say um, I haven't drawn one yet, but let's say I come in and I say, guys, I'm so sorry I'm late. I was playing poker with my friend and I, I want a ticket. you got an email. Oh, I got an email. <laughs> I want a ticket to go on this trip. And I was so excited. I had to run. I almost missed my ride, and I met this really cool girl. She was really Titanic. rich, though. Yes! 
That's it. So you get it? You yes. get it? Okay, Obviously, it's Titanic. Here. Okay? So instead of saying, oh, I'm sorry, I was late, I was on the Titanic. This makes you think and work things you through. You have to really work it through. Okay, so pick one. Oh, I'm going first? Well, we're all just going to pick oh, okay. one. So we have it. J- Jocelyn picked one. Steph picked one. You're picking one right now. Okay. And I will pick one. Don't look at it. Anyone want to volunteer to go first? Does Let, anyone want to go let's first? Let's have Steph go first. Steph? Okay. Okay. Oh, man. Okay, so Steph. All right, I'm sorry opening. Oh, okay. okay. You ready? Yes. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm sorry I'm late. My house got caught up in a tornado and I had this crazy dream and I met these weird people like a like an <laughs> animal and I had to sing down a road and I went to this big city to meet this big guy that's supposed to be really cool and help my dreams come true. Um, I don't know and I just woke up from this dream and my aunt and my uncle were there like everything was fine. Why are you wearing ruby slippers? <laughs> <laughs> what is there to buy? Okay, who's next? You want me to go next? Yeah, you go. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I open it up first here? Yeah. Okay. Well, how are you going to do it if you don't look what it is? Why am I going to open it up on the spot? Here we go. Go. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry I'm so late, but... But oh, I, you know, I was I was coming here, and you know, I have to I have to I have to go through all these hills to get here. You know, my house is, and as I'm going through the hills, I just decided to to sing. And as I'm going through the hills, I'm I, I'm just singing at the top of my lungs. And I this, you know, I kind of got sidetracked while the singing on top of the hills. And uh, you know, my family uh, they love to sing as well, so they 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 joined me. And I really felt like the hills were alive when I was singing, you guys. <laughs> and that's why that's why I'm so late. I'm so sorry. Have you seen that movie before? The Sound of Music, right? Yeah! <laughs> Have you seen the movie? Bits and Pieces. <laughs> you have Do you know what it's about? It's really interesting. It's about movie. Russians, right? Not no. Russians, Germans. No, Nazi Na- Germany. Nazi Germany, yes. Yeah, yeah. That, but that was good. That was a great way to throw the song I just know the, the song, song The Hills yeah. Are Alive with the Sound of Music. Uh, okay, um, do you want to go next or do you want me to go? You go, Jocelyn. Mercedes. Okay, I'll go. This is bad. You got to do it. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. I am so sorry I was late. I, um, I'm not going to lie. I met someone today that I was just like completely infatuated with, but he was totally disgusted by me. I like looked at him and I just wanted to know more about him. And he, he like kept moving away from me and we went outside and the skin was like sparkling and I don't know why, but his family, they look at me like they just want to attack me. It's the craziest thing. And, and I, uh, I, I, his, his sister runs so fast. I like, I've never seen a family run this fast. They like to go play baseball up in the hills when there's like thunderstorms. It's, I, I think they're on steroids, seriously, because they throw the ball so far. And it's so hard. Twilight. Twilight. Yeah. Yes. Good job. Yeah. Okay, Jocelyn, go ahead. Okay. Oh, my gosh, guys. Hold I'm... on. You got to do the, <laughs> slap the, the mic. Yes, come on. <laughs> oh, my gosh, guys. I'm so sorry I'm late. Uh, I met, you know, I was just really thinking about how things went this summer for me. And I met this guy and, you know. He's kind of a bad guy. I kind of like it. It's different. And then, you know, I have these friends, and they're a little different than me, too. They like the color pink, and we like to sing in, like, malt shops and stuff. And then, you know, they gave me, like, a, a makeover, and I think I look pretty hot, and I met this guy again. <laughs> and, you know? Mean girls. No. no. Pretty in pink. No, no. green. Thank you. Oh. Oh, you okay. said we were pink. Ladies, right? Yeah, the pink ladies, yes. Sorry, I honestly, guys, don't judge me. I've only seen Grease maybe like once. I know. You should see Grease too. It's better. Is it? (laughs) That was good. It gets your brain working, right? That was really good. Oh, man. We'll save the rest for just random. Yeah. Like, a vault shop. I was like, I don't remember that part from Mean Girls, but Mean Girls. (laughs) Here we go. Time to win right now. We got your tickets to go see Dan and Shay. Call our 20 at 702-364-9400. That's you. You're playing heads up. Four categories to choose from. You pick the one you want, and you pick your partner. And if you get six and 60 seconds, you will win. Call our 20 plays, 702-364-9400. Mix 94.1, Mercedes in the morning, and we're inside 60-plus minutes commercial-free. It's time for Heads Up with Mercedes in the Morning on Mix Nutty 4.1. Hi, Dina. Hi. Hey, you're color 20. You're playing Heads Up. All right. Oh, oh you've got a team behind you. Who's behind yes. you? I 
do. It's it's my coworker Nina. <laughs> All right, Nina, you better bring it for your girl Dana, okay? Okay, I'll bring my A game. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Pick a category, ladies. Do you want to go with pigskin, icy, not so silent night, or pilot Jones? Oh, I got a pigskin. I bet it's football. Okay, okay. pigskin it is. These are all things that are associated with football. Nice. All right. Who do you want to pick as your partner, Dana? Who do you want to pick? Mercedes or JC? Let's do let's do JC. All right. All right. Here we go, Dana and Nina. We got 60 seconds on the clock. We get six correct. We're gonna go see Dan and Shay. It's all things to do with Football, when they get it in the end zone, they score a touchdown. Correct. They wear this. This is part of their uniform. Uniform. They wear this. Helmet? No, not the helmet. It's over the shoulder pads. It's the top half of the uniform. Uh, jersey. Yes, correct. Okay, they uh, they throw the ball. Another another term for throwing the ball is a what? A pass. A pass is correct. Okay. They, put, they put this on their head. Helmet. Helmet is correct. If someone is running and you want to bring them down, what do you do? What do you do to them? You tackle. That is correct. If the quarterback throws the football and the opposing team catches it, it's called a what? An interception. Yeah! Is that six? Oh, did you miss that one? Uh, which one? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, okay. I, 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 uh, my golden thing is off. Yes, you got we it. Got Congratulations. Six, right? You got to get it. Six to 60 seconds. Did she say fumble? Or did you skip that one? I, I may have skipped that one. Oh, okay. That's why I was all thrown off. I'm like, no, that's not right. And then oh, yeah, the, the, the next one is, yes, totally got they it. You're a They don't know. They got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was confused for a brief moment. What I like about this category, though, is the third one is pass. So even if you couldn't figure it out, you could just say pass, <laughs> and you still would have gotten it. So congratulations, Dana. <laughs> Dana and Nina, way to go. Tickets to go see Dan and Shay when they bring the Dan and Shay Arena Tour to the T-Mobile Arena on October 17th of 2020. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Nice job. (laughs) Woo! Way to go, guys. Congratulations. And we will have more of these tickets to give away tomorrow in the 8 o'clock hour with Heads Up. Mix 94.1, Mercedes in the morning, 9 o'clock hour, 9.10. We got Terrible's Secret Sound with our jackpot at $119. The latest news updates happens now. It's the Mercedes Hot 3, Mix 94.1. And the Hot 3 is sponsored by Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Try the new jerk chicken quesadilla at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Eat better, feel better. All couples have to deal with conflict at some point in the relationship, but it turns out ignoring it, could make them happier. A new study from the University of Tennessee finds that couples who gloss over big issues and focus on solving small day-to-day problems tend to be happier. Now, the research was based on surveys and interviews with couples who described themselves as happily married. And after reviewing their communication styles and the conflicts that they face and how they tackle problems together, researchers found that The marriages were stronger and the people in them were happier when they put their energy into dealing with minor issues they could fix and ignoring the big ones that they would never agree on. So that to me, that sounds great in theory, but if these are big issues to you and you don't agree on them, won't they keep coming up? Like, how do you gloss over a big issue? I'm trying to think, like, what would be considered something that's really, really big? Let's just say maybe it's money. Maybe your your boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, whatever, spent a lot of money. Frivolous purchase. And that that's a big issue. But if you don't tackle that, then that behavior might continue, right? Right. And you want to put an end to that. I get it. I Avoiding conflict will definitely lead to a happier marriage, but... What's the last conflict you guys had? Big or small? Uh, night before last, I got really mad at him because I didn't like the way he was, I, I, I always say that he's, he barks at us. Uh-huh. So when he, and he says, I just speak loud. And so he was telling my daughter to do something. I was like, did you take that trash out? And I was like, stop barking. You could easily ask, did you take the trash out? He's like, I don't bark. That's how I talk. I'm loud. I'm like, no, because the way you just spoke to me. So that's what we get into a fight about is him barking, and he says he doesn't bark. What about you? The last, it was uh, yesterday afternoon. Um, Zoe got, she got sick. She threw up, and she threw up on the couch. And so my wife cleaned it up, and she's been saying we need to get our couch, our couch cleaned. And she wants to have someone come out and clean it professionally. 
the steamer, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, just unzip the couch cushions and throw them in the washing machine and we wash them ourselves. And she's like, no. You can't do that, can you? She's like, we had a couch years ago that we could do it. Oh. And then we had another couch after that and I tried it once and the couch, it would not fit back on the cushion. And she's like, no, this is a really nice couch and you unzip them and you take them off. You won't be able to get them back on. I'm like, yes, I will. And so that's the big debate of whether to have someone come out and professionally clean it or me unzip all the cushion covers and wash them myself. That seems like, one, you, you're taking a big risk. And two, it, more trouble than it's worth. Let the pros come out know. Z- 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 and then get it done. I'm I, sorry, but I side with her on that one. She said, if you want to wash them, go ahead. So I started to unzip it and I tried to peel it off. Oh, that's trouble. And as I'm peeling off, I'm like, this is a real tight fit. There's no way I'll be able to get it back on. Do your couch cushions fit in your washing machine, too? The actual just cover itself. So oh, un- the cover. Yeah, unzip. Oh, I thought t- you meant like the cushion. I'm no, like, no, no, how no, do no, you no. put that in there? Unzip and peel the cover off the cushion itself and then put it in the washing machine. Oh, the quality is going to go down. That's what she I says. I wouldn't do that. Uh, also, this morning, as far as airplane etiquette goes... What's your take on a few of these things? A recent survey asked people whether different things are acceptable or not. For example, 62% of us say it is not okay to take your shoes off on a plane. Do you agree? Is it okay? I think you're fine taking it off. It's when you kind of bring it up in someone else's personal space is when I I would take issue with it. Uh, I'm uh, with the 62%. I don't think you should ever take off your shoes on an airplane unless you're going overseas and you're wearing socks. That's and, And you're staying in your seat. You're not walking around. But that's what if the person me. has flip flops on? I see a lot of people that travel in flip flops and I always notice it because I usually see them go through security and they have to take off their <laughs> flip flops and they're walking through barefoot. Um, the thing with flip flops is they're too easy to slip off. And then I see people slipping them off and then putting their feet up on the seat. Mm-hmm. And it's just I don't like it. I don't think it's sanitary, but I do love wearing some flip flops, just not to the airport. What do you think? The, again, it, take your shoes off, but if you take it, you take your foot off and you kind of bring it up and it's now in my point of, it's in my area where we're sitting, like it's on your leg and I see it. I don't, I don't want to see the, I don't want to see the barefoot yeah. on the plane, on the plane. Is it okay to stand right next to the gate before your group gets called to board? Well, you, you're talking like Southwest boarding? Yeah. You're, you're B, but you're standing right there. No, I think the Bs need to wait, wait till the A's are completely done. Because yeah. that always throws a loop. Because I'll see a bunch of people lining up like, there's the A's or whatever. And you get over and they're like, no, I'm C. Like, dude, sit back down. You're C. Sit Relax, down. Relax. You got time, right? man. You're, you're going to get a middle C. It's <laughs> inevitable. Sorry. 74% said no. It's not cool. You're just in the way. Uh, is it okay to say hi to the person next to you when you sit down? Yes, it is. And that brings up, I got to ask you something. I agree. 89% said yes, it is. 11% said no, just leave them alone. Oh, I got to find My wife uh, was flying back and she sat next to a guy whose son played for the Denver Broncos. He was the center for years. And then, then he just got traded to the Panthers. And I said, I'll ask Mercedes if she knows him. She's a Broncos fan. But that all started from a conversation. My wife sat down and she said hello. And they started talking. Uh, big guy? Yeah, big guy. He's from Idaho, I believe. He has a Super Bowl ring, so he was the center for Peyton Manning, and then he was just traded to the Panthers this past year. Is his name Matt? Maybe. Paradis or something like yes, that? Yes, the guy. I looked him up when she said yes. That sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, do you remember when he played for the, yeah, for the Broncos? I, I do. I do remember. He, yeah, he was with Peyton Manning. He hasn't played for a while, though. He's Because he was with Carolina. Oh, has he moved? Yeah, he's been, oh, he was traded, then, yeah. He still plays, though? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. I just learned something new. But yes, that all started from a simple, uh, she started a conversation when she sat down. I, I like it to a point, but at some point I, I, I don't want to talk anymore. I just, I feel bad. Then I put in my mm-hmm. ear, ear parts and I'm like, okay, this is your signal. I'm done. Do you feel the safe zone for a conversation is while you're still at the gate? And once you start backing up from the gate, then it's like, okay, now our flight is getting underway. We can go our separate ways until we, until we land. I usually, ju- uh, honestly, I just. I close my eyes as soon as I get on the plane and I just pretend <laughs> I'm asleep the whole time. All right. Finally, this morning. So note to self, the beaches in the Philippines, they are strict. I don't know. Maybe they're not strict. And this woman was just going a little crazy. But there's a 26 year old woman named Lin Su Sing from Taiwan. And she was on vacation in the Philippines last week with her boyfriend. Well, she went out onto the beach in a very tiny bikini. And from the pictures, you can see that it was basically just a few pieces of string with the smallest possible amounts of clothing covering the most sensitive zones. 
The hotel staff told her not to wear it on Wednesday, but she did anyway. And when she wore it again on Thursday, they called the cops and she was arrested for lewdness, which carries a fine of around $48. A state-run news agency says Lynn and her boyfriend said the bikini was a form of art and says it is quite normal for us in our country. We can post a picture of her in the bikini. You can make the determination. Is this, do you consider this bikini lewd? Ooh, it's, it's very, a string. Pretty much. Um, I'll show you the front. If you can see it, there's not much to see. You can't see anything. Yeah. I but mean, she it, was just, she doesn't work there. She was just visiting. No, she was visiting. Yeah. And she was arrested for that. Oh, there's the, oh wait, here's the front of the bikini. It's it's just bare. Wow, that is it's just an extra string on the front. I mean, really, it looks like. Well, I don't even know. It looks like a tissue. <laughs> uh, Danielle, good morning. We're talking about bikinis and planes and everything. What do you think? Well, I just had a funny story about um, someone who wouldn't stop talking to me on a plane. He sat down next to me and he just talked my ear off the whole time about his whole life. And at the end of the plane, he gave me a business car, but it just had his picture on it. And then on the back, it had his name and then all of his social media accounts so we could be friends in the future. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Did you friend him? (laughs) No. That uh, you know what that to me so this says that he really wants to make friends. Yeah, that's right. And you're, you're pretending to be sleep. Danielle doesn't uh, friend him on Facebook. Oh, poor guy. But Danielle and I are friends on social media. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty glad that you're alone. You said she's scared of me. I mean, I don't see what she sees, but maybe it's because I'm wearing your cologne. Billy Eilish, it's Mix 94.1, Mercedes in the morning, 9 o'clock hour. Here we are, coming up at 9.20. We'll give you this hour's winning code word for Mix 94.1's Workday Payday. And with that code word, you could get yourself $1,000. It's going to be another crazy sports night slash afternoon for me. You got uh, tonight, you, more baseball. Oh, is you're on. Yankees, Baseball huh? is back on, playing the Astros in New York tonight. And then after that, Golden Knights are playing tonight back in town. They'll be playing Nashville over at the T-Mobile Arena, just coming off of that big win in L.A., uh, where the Kings are still, from what I understand, blaming the loss on the Taylor Swift banner that's in the Staples Center. Now, they they covered up this banner because of this Taylor Swift curse. They feel like ever since that banner went up, they haven't had a good season. And they covered it up when they played the Golden Knights. It didn't help. They still lost. But... I guess if you have nothing else to blame it on, that's what you blame it on. We right? talked about what their kind of the stats before this Taylor Swift banner went up. What like two years ago, mm-hmm. and how they were doing and making the playoffs and everything, and then they put this banner up. And it's a Taylor Swift banner congratulating her on sellouts or something at, at Staples Center or something like that. Yeah, but it's hanging in the rafters. And ever since it was up there, the team is kind of you know they've been on a decline. And they're hoping things will turn around. The Taylor's the curse of the Taylor Swift banner. A lot of people are saying that this is just a made up curse. This, uh, it has nothing to do with it. They're just not playing well. But I do believe in some curses. I do believe that some things are bad luck. Are you one of those superstitious people? Is there a curse that you do believe in or something that you think is bad luck? Or how about places? Are there any places that you believe are are bad luck places? There's a couple of places in town that I've noticed that a restaurant will go in there Mm -hmm. and that restaurant will close in like two, two months. Then a new restaurant will go in there and then they'll close. I really believe there are certain cursed spaces in town that just no business can survive in them. I don't know what it is. It's like the energy in the room or the area or we've all seen Things like that here in town, right? What's the what's the cursed spot, or what what do you think is bad luck or curse? Seven zero two three six four ninety four hundred. There's a restaurant. There was a restaurant area a building here in town, and I remember back in the day it was a sushi place, a really hot sushi place for a quick minute, and then that shut down. And then it was like a Mexican place, and then that shut down. And then it was just like an American cuisine, and then that shut down. And then I, I, I felt like they tried to do like a club thing there, and that didn't work. 
business after business. Then finally, the place just turned into a vet. Oh, my God. I know exactly you know what, what you're talking about. Yes, I know. But it's been a vet for, I think, 10 plus years now. The, the vet works. The restaurants in that business, in that building, did not work. I had been to that restaurant before, and I thought it was pretty good. I can't remember the name of it for the life of me, but I thought it was pretty decent. And then, yeah, it kept switching mm-hmm. to new things. And then all of a sudden, one day I'm driving by, and it's like, veterinary hospital? <laughs> what the heck? Where did that come but from? But it's been thriving for the past decade there. Restaurants not c- cursed by restaurants. Popular with pets. There's another place that I have seen that it, it's always, it's so cursed. The space must be cursed because... But the thing is, it keeps turning into another Mexican restaurant. It's like Mexican restaurant <laughs> after Mexican restaurant after Mexican restaurant. And it's, I keep thinking, maybe you should go with a different kind of cuisine if that one's not working. I don't know. I mean, I love Mexican food. I don't know why it's not working there, but maybe it's time to re- revamp or something. If you're the person opening up the restaurant, doesn't that thought go through your mind? Like, oh, this building is for lease? What was here before? Oh, six restaurants were here before. Oh, my my restaurant, my business plan's amazing. My restaurant's going to be the one that succeeds here. If I'm a restaurant owner, I might go to a different spot. If you tell me five restaurants were in this building and they all shut down, this is something about the building, the location maybe is not right for a restaurant. But the tourist in me, like the stubborn person in me says, I'll do it. Better. You were the one to break like, the curse. I'm gonna, it, it, has no, it was because they couldn't figure out how to do it and I've got it figured out. So I go in there and then when I fail, I'll be like, that building's cursed. <laughs> <laughs> we had an office here at the, at the radio station that uh, an employee left and no one went in there for years. Yeah, I still feel like there's bad energy in there. I, I mean, I uh, the person in there is great, and yes. there's no issues at all. But I feel like she's cleansing, but every day she's in there, her personality is giving it to cleanse. I saged it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I brought sage in, and I, I cleansed it. So Evil spirits are flying out. <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy just texted us. She says, my husband and I will not wear the same jersey to a Knights game if we've worn it to a losing game. Oh, yeah, I'll change up my whole M.O. We won that game. I should probably wear the same one. We lost that game. Got to change something up about the appearance. But though she says her jersey, will she try that jersey again or just not to the next game? Because that's going to get expensive. They say same jersey. Yeah, you can't buy a ton of jerseys. Or can you? I guess so, yeah. I mean, if you really like it. I'm way too superstitious with all that stuff, though. So I get it, especially with sports. I've told you, I sit in the same spot for all the games. I... At, in the last half of the game, I have to eat a handful of gummy bears. Like, that's just my routine. Even if we lose, I still do You that, still go though. through that? Yeah. That's, your, that's your ritual, Th- though. That's just my excuse to have. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, so I must the Yankees, do it for the game. <laughs> the Yankees aren't even playing. We're watching This Is Us. I don't care. I got to be in my spot. <laughs> I am really hoping that Mandy Moore's character succeeds. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., it's episode number three of the Covered Crooner, which is brought to you by the world-famous Cats Meow Karaoke and Entertainment Club. This season is on fire. Yeah, we have had some great contestants. Week one, it was Carrot Top. Carrot Top was dressed as the alligator, thanks to our friends over at Star Costume for providing all of our great costumes. And then last week, it was our buddy George Wallace, comedian George Wallace. He was dressed as the rabbit. So who will it be tomorrow? I don't know. I'm very excited because so far... Like you said, it has just been on fire. It's so be- good. I think our celebrities are better than the celebrities on The Mass Singer. Just oh. saying. My own personal opinion. I completely <laughs> agree. And not only that, but we are playing for a really cool prize. $1,000. $1,000 for their charity of choice. So it's all for a good cause. And tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., Covered Crooner, Season 2, Episode number 3. <laughs> It's time for Terrible Secret Sound with Mercedes in the Morning, Mix 94.1. Okay, the Terrible Secret Sound is brought to you by Terrible Herbs. Stop by any Terrible Herbs and you have a chance to win $1,000 a day in October and November. All right, we debuted a brand new sound yesterday. And we did not get a winner, so we added money to the jackpot. The Terrible Secret Sound jackpot is now at $119. We'd love to give you guys this money, so let's play the sound for you one more time. Here you go. 
Do you know that sound? If you can identify that, you're going to get some money in your pocket. Caller 20 gets to take a guess right now. 702-364-9400. Bring back to Maroon 5. The song is called Memories, Mix 94.1. It's time for Terrible Secret Sound with Mercedes in the Morning, Mix 94.1. Hey, Heather. Hi. Hey, good morning. You're caller 20. You get to take a guess at the Terrible Secret Sound. Yay. All right. It's a new sound, so it's really hard right now, but you never know. You could just randomly get it, and we've seen it happen before. So let's play the sound for you one more time, Heather. Here you go. Okay, for $119, can you tell us what is the terrible secret sound? It sounds like tape or a sticker being ripped off. Is, like it, tape. is it tape or a sticker being ripped off? Ooh. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, just as good a guess as any, Heather. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you for trying. We're going to add 25 bucks to the jackpot tomorrow. The terrible secret sound will be worth $144. Taylor Swift, Mix 94.1. Mercedes in the Mornings, What's Trending on Mix 94.1. Sleep is trending this morning, so a new study says a bad night's sleep can make you crave junk food. Sleep deprivation apparently increases hormones called endocannabinoids, and those have been linked to getting the munchies. They make eating more enjoyable, but they increase the desire for specific types of food like cakes and cookies and chips, things like that. Lack of sleep also disrupts communication between neurons involved in appetite, leading to bad choices. Do you crave stuff more, unhealthy things, when you're really tired? I've never noticed. I crave more caffeine. Do you? More coffee to try to get me going. Red Bull or something. I think about let's say on days like we have bite of Las Vegas, that's a long day and I get home and I do crave that. I crave something just like potato chips or like a hamburger. That's I crave those things that I normally would just kind of stay away from. And my whole excuse is, well, I can have them because I was running around all day today. So it's a total mental thing. That's a, Maybe that's why after bite, I always get a box of sugary cereal. Yeah, this was your first year that you did it, and though, I couldn't right? do it because the whole thing, the party that was going on in my neighborhood that my wife said there were hundreds of kids in our driveway, and then she couldn't get in, and then I pulled up the security cameras, and she... <laughs> well, well she went... was scared. Maybe her eyes were playing tricks on her. You never know. There were kids in the neighborhood. There was no kids in our actual driveway <laughs> itself, but yeah, that, that was the first year in years. I didn't have my cereal. Well, now, here's your excuse. You can get it when you're really the tired. The end of the week Sorry, on Friday. I was so tired, I had to have cereal. So that is trending this morning. You is trending this morning. No, not you, specifically you, as in the TV show. The second season of the Netflix show, based on the novel by Caroline Kepnes, will reportedly return on December 30th. The psychological thriller that follows Penn Badgley's Joe will follow his sociopathic behavior after a jaw-dropping finale. Season two will have Joe moving cross-country to L.A. with the best intentions to turn over a new leaf and with a new city comes a new love interest. If you can't wait, though, you can always read the second book. It's called Hidden Bodies. And then finally this morning, Zoe Kravitz is trending. So the actress and daughter of Lenny Kravitz and Lisa Bonet is reportedly cast as Catwoman in the new Batman movie. Now, sources say that she was testing out some scenes last week opposite Robert Pattinson. He's playing Batman. The movie called The Batman is hitting theaters in 2021, and that is what's trending. Camila Cabello, it's Mix 94.1, Mercedes in the Morning. And that's it for us for a Tuesday morning. We're so excited because tomorrow is the covered crooner. We just did a photo shoot with some of the heads from the covered crooner. It the mask. Back. Yeah, we, we kind of were playing around practicing our karaoke. That's hard. Who's going to be the celebrity under the mask tomorrow? Make sure you're listening in the 8 o'clock hour. And we'll have a new contestant. Contestant number three. That is it for us. We're out the door. Heather is on the way next. She's going to have more tickets for you to see Not So Silent Night with meet and greet passes. 
Our big lineup was announced yesterday. The Goo Goo Dolls, Natasha Bedingfield, Dean Lewis, Maddie Poppy. One more reminder, you want to register for Mix Mail before 11.59 tonight because you will get that pre-sale code for when they go on sale for you pre-sailers tomorrow. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait until Friday to buy your tickets. And right now, it's time for the line of the day. We play a little improv game. What was, it, how, how, what was the name of the game? It was called I'm Sorry I'm Late. I'm Sorry I'm Late. I know what it's called. <laughs> I'm Sorry I'm Late. You got to <laughs> tussle the microphone before you get into the whole segment. And what we did was is you had to reach into the Cauldron of Doom. You need to pull out a random movie. And that movie's theme, um, that movie's storyline was the reason that you were late. And just my personal opinion... I think Steph was the winner. If there are winners in improv, she was good. Steph was the winner from yeah. this morning. Take a listen. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm sorry I'm late. My house got caught up in a tornado, and I had this crazy dream, and I met these weird people like a like an <laughs> animal, and I had to sing down a road, and I went to this big city to meet this big guy that's supposed to be really cool and help my dreams come true. Um, I don't know, and I just woke up from this dream, and my aunt and my uncle were there. Like, everything was fine. Why are you wearing ruby slippers? <laughs> That is the best. That was so funny. I thought everyone was, was good, good, though. Was yeah. Good day, yeah. Except I, I thought Jocelyn's was Mean Girls, and it was uh, great. And I thought it was pretty in pink. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe there was someone, a winner this morning. The improv was good. <laughs> the guessing, not so much. <laughs> That'll do it for show number 1057 of Mercedes in the Morning. Mercedes in the Morning. Did you miss the show? You're not going to want to miss this, folks. Catch up now. Download the podcast of today's show and get updates now online at Mix941.fm. Mercedes in the Morning returns tomorrow morning.